mission in the Melissa Nellison Center for Autism is to continue to partner with this amazing community that we have to bring education and support related to autism spectrum disorder to UVU. Uh, in addition to the amazing programs that we already have up and running, I wanted to tell you about two new partnerships that we are really, really excited about. Uh, we are partnering with the Alpine School District to host our preschool classroom. So please be sure that you tour the preschool space in our new building. We also have a newly remodeled elementary classroom in the McKay building, which is this red brick building right behind you. So be sure that you go in there and tour that space as well. Uh, don't miss the doTERRA playgrounds. As soon as the weather warms up, we will have those playgrounds ready for business and the official ground cover in. We are also really excited to announce that we are partnering with the Utah Department of Health's Children with Special Health Care Needs to offer families case management. So when they get a new diagnosis or they move into the area and they don't know who to turn to, we are going to be offering case management. They can call on the phone, they can come to the center and talk with someone who can help them find the services that they need. Um, we also now have a beautiful building to host our expanding programs. So when you go in to explore the building today, you have to take note of little things even. Uh, there's specialized lighting in almost every room, the height of the windows. Uh, there's a specific wall of windows that we call our awareness wall. It helps us see autism from different perspectives depending on which side of the wall you're on. Uh, there's different textures. There's so many spaces and many, many, many people for many months were involved in the decision-making process to make the spaces work for individuals on the spectrum across the age span. You're gonna see the William and Lisa Hopkins Passages Lounge where adults with autism who are transitioning to higher education or looking for a job, uh, they come to connect and uh, support each other. You're gonna see the classrooms where young children will be receiving intensive intervention at the same time that our UVU students are learning to work directly with them to support their developmental, their educational goals. You're gonna to get to visit our new training rooms upstairs where we are gonna be training educators from across the state uh, in best practice techniques to support individuals on the spectrum. Our community partners also get to use those rooms to help train and support parents, first responders, business members in our community, and many, many more. You're gonna see state-of-the-art UVU classrooms where our students from education and autism studies are gonna learn techniques to be the educators of the future. This building is truly an amazing accomplishment and I cannot wait for you guys to walk through those doors and see everything that we've been up to. It's kind of shocking to think how far we've come in the last five to six years but when I start to think about what we've done in the last five to six years, I really get excited about what we can do in the next five years, in the next 10 years. And I know without a doubt that this community of support that the Melissa Nelson Center for Autism is surrounded by is gonna dream big. So thank you all for being a part of that dream. Alpine School District students and many other students who have been diagnosed on the autism spectrum will benefit for years to come from the kindness and charity that's been expressed by so many of you. This facility will certainly be a blessing in the lives of the students who interact in the Melissa Nellison Center for Autism. And the building, as I now understand it, Cole, is your building. So congratulations to you. A wonderful partnership has been formed be between K-12 education, higher education, and local communities to ensure the success of the center. Thanks to University President Matt Holland, to Education Dean Parker Fossen, to Teresa Carden, the Director of the Autism Center for making this a reality came from an idea many years ago and now we stand here together to celebrate from my end i can assure you of the commitment and investment alpine school district will make as we provide teachers for the school our hope 
is to create a nurturing learning environment where students and their parents, plus college students who are training to become educators, will all have wonderful, enriching educational experiences. Thanks again to all of you who have made this day possible and for your continued support of the Melissa Nellison Center for Autism into the future. I predict many amazing things will occur inside these walls. Good afternoon. My name is Cole Nellison. And, uh, and on behalf of my sisters, Mackenzie and Presley, I would like to thank you all for coming today. Today, I mean, to cut the ribbon on the Cole Nelson building at the Melissa Nelson Center for Autism. I would like to thank President Holland, the donors who funded the building and the builders who built it. Thank you for building such an awesome building for me and my friends. Some of my friends from, from my school are here today and, would, and, I would, and I would like to thank them for coming as well. There are many people who have helped me in my life Teachers to many to name. My best friend Bree, who, ha who has helped me to learn, to talk, to and let's see, play and read. Thank you, Bree, for always me pushing me to learn new things. Finally, I would like to thank my parents. I love you so much. Thanks, thanks again for coming. Last year, I, I uh, ended my remarks with, our hope and dream is that this center will be a beacon of hope that will be, that will be successful in training an army of soldiers for all of us as we help our families face the challenges of autism. As I have walked through the halls of the center, I am proud to say I feel hope. It was designed to create light and inspiration to everyone who passes through the front doors and was particularly designed to facilitate learning for our children on the spectrum. To create light and structure to to create light and structure was not an easy task, but I'm proud to say the architects and the craftsmen who designed and built the Cole Nelson building were able to accomplish it. I've often thought about why Keith surprised me with the center being named after me. And frankly, it's not really me. I've always tried to stay behind the scenes focused upon our family and maintaining our privacy. But this mission to help families dealing with the issues of autism and the passion President Holland and UVU to really make a difference inspired me to step out from behind my wall of privacy and to say proudly I love the families. And the children dealing with this issue. And we are here to help. I would like to take a moment to recognize McKinsey and Presley, who I fondly call Lou and Boo. Life as siblings of an autistic person 
can be very difficult to say the least. Sometimes more gracefully than others, but always in ways that continually amaze me. Those two girls rise every day to the challenges set before them as Cole's sisters. Just yesterday, last night, as we were preparing for today, Presley was sitting at the bar and she said to me, Mom, how can I be a better sister to Cole? And she's only seven. And I think of the long uh, road that she has ahead of her. I thought that was pretty profound for a seven-year-old. Their consistent ability to, sh to choose patience and kindness is remarkable and their fierce love for their brother is no less than beautiful. Thank you, girls, for your important roles as Cole's sister and as precious members of our family. I know at times you feel like you've had to take a back seat. But Dad and I recognize who you are as individuals. And we love you. I need to think a few more. Uh, well, actually, a lot of people. There's going to be uh, way too many to name. Um, some of you know exactly who you are that have uh, been there from the beginning when this all started. who uh, may be a friend, but was actually more of a family, who uh, stepped right up and said, what do we need to do? Keith and I will be forever grateful. And we do really love you. Um, uh, also, to my dear friends, I see you out here supporting me today. You're beautiful to me, and I love you. Thank you for supporting me always and being there for me when I am in my crazy moments and I feel like I can't go on anymore. But you help me and you get me through. Um, thank you to all of Cole's educators, to his tutors. You have no idea the impact you've had on our families, or on our family, to Cole, he would not be, he's shaking his head, you would, he would not be where he's at today if it wasn't for you. The doctors told us he would never speak, he wouldn't read. Guess what, he reads on a third grade level 
and he speaks. Um, I want to thank Lori Bowen. I can't see her, but she has, uh, she's involved with the center and um, she is, I know I'm going over my five minutes. Um, <laughs> those of you that know me, now I'm chatty Kathy. Uh, she has been with Keith and I working for a long time in the autism community. And she was in the video inside, those of you that were at the breakfast. Um, the community here in Utah Valley would really suffer if she was not involved in autism. And uh, she is an amazing woman. And um, she pours her heart and soul into it. And uh, thank you, Lori, and I love you. And lastly, uh, two things. Uh, thank you to my family, to Keith's family, for the love and support that they have given us um, for 17 years in this journey. Uh, if we have made the call, they have been there. And it is a family uh, diagnosis. It's not just for the individual, it's for the family, and they have been there to support us. And um, thank you, and we love you, um, to Keith. Hasn't this been fun? <laughs> you know, we say all the time, you know, you could not, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> if, if people could come in our house, you know, people look at our lives, they think it, our life, and they really think it's a fairy tale all the time. They, they think, oh, look at the places you go or whatever, the car we may drive or whatever. If they could come in our house, wow. <laughs> Honestly, wow. You can't make it up. It, it's pure chaos. I, I mean, we don't open our windows in the summer. The AC is always on because if people could hear, they would die. Um, well, he says it's not that bad, really. It's pretty chaotic. It's kind of funny. Um, anyway, so it's, it's awesome. Anyway, uh, or I guess I could say it's autism. It's really great. Anyway, so in closing, I would like to echo the words so bravely spoken by Cole. I guess I should say Cole. Uh, I do need to tell you, also I neglected to tell you. You're a good boy. Um, one thing when the doctor told us, uh, you know, they, people say that children with autism are cold and not loving. And that is not true. I want to tell you all that. As you could see, how loving he was towards his mom. Uh, I've made a conscious effort every day to hug him, to love him, to tell him that. And every day I tell him he's a good boy, that he's smart, and that he's kind. And Cole. You're a good boy, you are smart, and you are kind. And I do tell him that he's handsome, and he is so handsome. 
And he always does that, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he says, yes, I am, and he is. So, uh, like I said, I, I want to echo the words he spoke so bravely. And thank you to UVU, President Holland, his teachers and tutors, the architects, the craftsmen, the members of the center staff for all you have done and will do as we bring hope to the families in our community. Well, this is, uh, this is a very moving moment for me. Uh, it's already been moving to hear what we've heard from the people that we've heard it from and to see this site, this community of people from all over, from the university, from the city, the valley, across the state, from industry, from academia, family and friends. Um, it's a testimony to the urgency of the issue before us and and the uh, incredible act of human generosity that's at play here making it all possible. Uh, it's moving to me because of a project that now has been years in the making. I don't know that I've ever uh, you know, told the full story uh, publicly, but for me this project began within the first weeks of my presidency. And I, was, uh, I knew that one of the things this university needed to do was connect with the business community. We needed the universities to be more responsive to what our business leaders needed. And so I asked uh, two friends, Greg Butterfield and Fraser Bullock, to co-chair a business engagement strategy. And it was after our first meeting, after we were talking about all the things we were already doing for business, and then some of the things that we thought we could do as the initial meeting. We finished this meeting. and and uh, talked a lot about a lot of things that I thought would, we, would help with economic development and moving our community forward in so many ways. And Fraser Bullock looked at me and said, now are you guys doing anything about autism? It was the first I'd thought of it. Like most great ideas at this university, they don't come from me. And uh, I said, I, I don't know. Well, let me look into it. And um, I looked into it and we weren't doing anything. Uh, and then uh, I met uh, a friend and neighbor, Brent Wood, who was doing something about autism in a very profound way, and put his arm around my shoulder and started to talk to me about the rates of autism in this valley, the rates of it across the nation, but especially in this valley in the state. It was an educating role. Uh, the princes on National Presidential Advisory Board playing a national role for this. Uh, then, uh, then someone introduced me to this outstanding man here on the front row, Keith Nellison. A kind of a life-changing moment, a breakfast at the Marriott, and we started to talk about the things I was learning about autism and that we wanted to do something. And, uh, and uh, as I gather what happens all the time when Keith gets involved, things really start to move uh, uh, in a very powerful way. Uh, not just providing resources, but energy and vision and strategy and uh, a remarkable thing. And then just the way everyone else uh, has rallied. Mitch Burton coming on board and our friends at Vivint and doTERRA and our great partners at the UCCU Center. And again, so many more, I, I can't list them. But you've made this happen. This building behind you is the very first building built at Utah Valley University that's funded entirely by privately donated funds. Every thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's not just the bricks and mortar. The programming for the building has been fund. I, I can't stress the significance of this enough. It means as long as those bricks and mortar are there, and we have this obligation to our don donors, this building will be here to address autism in this community for a very long time. Well after I think every one of us here will still be standing. Lives will be changed because of what this family, these families, these donors, these business leaders have stepped forward to help us do. You've got to, we, we all love Cole and we love his colleagues and his classmates here, but think about that replicated hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times over. And that's what we're cutting a ribbon about for today. 
You know, we're wearing these little pins, many of us, that show a picture of a puzzle piece. This condition is, is a puzzle. We don't, we don't understand all of it and all the science behind it. And, and, and we're going to leave that element of it to other institutions. But we also don't always know how to respond to it. And that's what we're about. We are going to figure out the very best ways to respond and to cope and to move forward in a practical way. That's what this institution's about. That's what this valley needs. That's what these donors would like to see happen, and that's what we will do. And we will do it on a national scale. I believe we will be the national leader for how you address these issues in a day-to-day -day way. That's our aim, and it's made possible today by, again, these extraordinary acts of generosity and leadership. It's, um, it's been said, at least I believe it, uh, it's true in nature, it's true in business, I think, in personal life, in all life, really, that um, the most difficult roads in life lead to the most beautiful destinations. I don't know why life works like that, but it seems to. Well, what we're going to do with this building, I believe, will make many roads left less difficult and will make more destinations even more beautiful. On behalf of a very grateful institution and the students who will come through here, the faculty who will work here, the staff who will make a difference, I say thank you to you, our donors, our friends, our community champions, and especially to Cole and his classmates who are here today and who have provided the ribbon that we will now cut. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.